So you're Bill Gates in the 1990s, and you have a problem. You were making insane money. You were running one of the most successful software companies on the planet. And for the longest time, people loved you. You were the American success story. But for some reason, something switched. Everyone started hating your guts. And when I say hate, I mean hate. Your picture has been on the cover of virtually every major news magazine. You're written up in all the papers. And for years and years, it was Bill Gates, the boy wonder, the man America loves to admire, the man everybody wants to be. Now all your press is Bill Gates, the man everybody hates, everyone wants to gang up on. What happened? And it was all because you made people use Internet Explorer on your Windows operating system. Yeah, because wanting people to use your web browser on your operating system that you made on personal computers that you popularized is such a crime. You were not doing anything illegal per se, you were just being a smart businessman. But the problem was, even though you weren't doing anything illegal, it didn't look good in the public eye. You looked like a greedy capitalist trying to squash competition. You were already a billionaire. What more could you ask for? This narrative that you're an evil person was just too easy to spin, which is why you quickly became the most hated man in America. And here's the thing about America. If the masses hate you enough, they will eventually find a way to tear you down and throw you in prison, whether or not you actually committed a crime. Why? Because think about it, if the public hates you enough, all it takes is just one ambitious politician, one judge, one bureaucrat who wants to move up the ladder, and they will dedicate their entire existence to tearing you down. Also, they can say, that's right, I'm the one who brought down Bill Gates. Vote for me, please. And that is the danger of being hated in America. And it's also why all of a sudden, the entire US government started coming after Bill Gates. Justice Department has charged Microsoft with engaging in anti-competitive and exclusionary practices designed to maintain its monopoly in personal computer operating systems. And during the investigation, even though you were using your right to plead the fifth, it just made the public hate you even more. Have you uh, communicated to people within Microsoft, uh, other than Mr. Moritz, that browser share was a very, very important goal. Using those words. I don't remember using those words. Have you communicated the substance of that to people within Microsoft? Help me understand. If you communicate to people that something is important, is the substance of that identical to communicating to them it's very, very important? Would it be in your view, Mr. Gates, if you were using those terms, would important be the same as very, very important? Not identical. What would be the difference? The two varies. And what significance in terms of substance would those two varies have? Hmm. A speaker's tendency towards hyperbole. If OJ Simpson was the guy who actually committed the crime, but got off because he was able to play the victim card and win the hearts and minds of the public, you managed to do the exact opposite. You didn't really commit a crime, but because you came off so unlikable, so unrelatable, so hated, the public was like, this rich scumbag needs to be taken down a notch. And it was in that moment that you knew you needed to make a drastic change. If you didn't make yourself likable fast, you were going to quickly find yourself in prison dropping the soap. But how? How were you going to turn this dude, a greedy, selfish capitalist, into a generous, likable billionaire perceived as a force for good? One word. Charity. See, people don't hate billionaires because they have all this money. No, they hate billionaires because they don't share any of that money. They hoard it to themselves. But take that same billionaire and have him give a homeless dude $10,000. And I bet that that homeless dude is going to be his biggest fan. That is the power of charity. No one can hate a billionaire that donates to good causes, that's committed to funding projects to make the world a better place, that's committed to giving away all his wealth, even if that means he's just donating money into his own family foundation that he controls. All that matters are the optics. And so, in the midst of your antitrust battle with the government as you were peeing your pants, you decide to step down as Microsoft CEO. Microsoft was your baby, your crown jewel. So one could only imagine how hard this decision was. But for Billy, it was either step down and repair your public image, or eventually go to prison. So you chose to step down, and you told the public that you're stepping down to focus more on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. If you ever wonder why billionaires are so obsessed with making themselves look charitable, none of these billionaires care about the charity. All they care about are the optics. All they care about is making the masses think to themselves, wow, he's such a generous person. I'm glad that it's him that has all the money and not someone else. When behind closed doors, you and I know the truth. You and I know that secretly, every billionaire out there is just like this Bill Gates. You don't get to the top by being generous, by caring about charity. But in order to stay at the top, you better make yourself look like Mother Teresa. Stay dangerous and let's get into it.
And really fast, if you're a business owner tuning in right now and your business relies on you having effective communication with clients through phone calls or text messages to close the deal, it's crucial that you move beyond using your personal phone line or iMessage, especially if you want to level up your business in 2024, which is where Nextiva comes in. Nextiva can help you make a lot more money in 2024. With Nextiva, you can spin up new phone numbers, manage all your text-based contacts, and sell like crazy, all within the Nextiva mobile app. That way, you can scale your business way faster, and you can say goodbye to the days of getting random calls on your phone and wondering if it's a personal call or a business call and answering it unconfidently. For example, if you're in real estate, you can spin up a unique phone number that you only share with your real estate tenants, and you can spin up another phone number just for calling homeowners at scale to see if they're willing to sell their homes. Others use Nextiva to manage the day-to-day -day inner workings of their media companies. Think about it, we have different company email addresses like support at and sales at, but why don't we do the same with phone numbers? Great sales and great relationship management require tools, and Nextiva is the most trusted one out there. Don't let an amateur business setup hold you back in 2024. And right now, you can get up to 50% off your plan by going to trynextiva.com slash jake. So scroll down and click the link below to elevate your business communication now. We are pleased that the court agreed with the department that Microsoft abused its monopoly power, that it violated the antitrust laws, and that it harmed consumers. Microsoft has been held accountable for its illegal conduct by a court of law. The government did end up ruling that Microsoft was indeed a monopoly and that they needed to change their business practices. And yet you, as the company's co-founder, face almost zero consequences. That's because around the same time this news started coming out, the news also filled with announcements of all your newest donations and grant programs. For every negative story published about you, there was a bigger, better story about how you gave a billion dollars to feed starving children, or the 500 million you donated to curing malaria. Now, whenever people looked up your name or read about you in the paper, it wouldn't be about some rich guy scoring over the average American anymore. It would be about how billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates donates billions to charity. Thanks to your donations, the masses were at least content with you now. Since the 1990s, you've donated more than $50 billion to help eradicate diseases, spread education, and a long list of other causes that just make people feel all warm and fuzzy inside. $50 billion is a lot of money, but compared to your $125 billion net worth, $50 billion is not going to change your lifestyle at all, but it will keep you out of jail, so it is money well spent. And it's worth like a charm. Most people today don't even know about the old Bill Gates or that Microsoft had an antitrust case. And it all happened within the space of a few short years without you ever having to see the inside of a jail cell. And other billionaires soon followed. Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, they all jumped on the charity bandwagon. They all became the most charitable billionaires out there. And isn't it interesting that the most public billionaires also happen to be the ones that are the most charitable? You and Buffett even got together to create the Giving Pledge, where billionaires can commit to donating at least half of their net worth to a good cause. This was the answer to every billionaire's prayers, a way to do whatever they wanted in business, a way to be as ruthless as they wanted like how Bezos treats his Amazon workers while still looking like a saint to the public. But as the years passed, as you donated more and more money to your foundation, you realized that your donations weren't just buying you a good reputation, it was also giving you the opportunity of a lifetime. Soon, almost every billionaire in America has some sort of charity or foundation that they were donating huge amounts of money to. Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and even Sam Bickman fried all tried to use charities at some point to repair the public image. But none of them ever managed to achieve the same success that you did. So what was your secret? The secret was you didn't just donate your money to any old charity or foundation that needed it. Just like in business, your philanthropy was strategic. Because in order for your donations to make you look like a saint, you can't just donate the money and hope for the best. You need the public to know about it. You need everyone to talk about it. And how do you do that? By getting the media to report on it. But how do you get the media to report on it? It's not like philanthropy is going to get a lot of views. Simple. You got to donate to the media as well. Since the creation of the Gates Foundation, you've donated more than a quarter of a billion dollars to media companies like NPR, BBC, The Guardian, and ProPublica. And as if like magic, these media companies started doing a lot of positive reporting on you and your foundation. Funny how that works. And when they feel like they need to run a more critical piece of news on you and your work, you know, just to keep the appearance of being unbiased, well, then they're even nice enough to run the questions and reporting by you before it goes out for publishing. Because at the end of the day, who is going to bite the hand that feeds them? But that's not all. Beyond getting major news outlets to talk about your charity and good deeds, whenever you donate money to these outlets, you also get to choose the topics that your money can be used to cover. Topics like health or education, which are both things your foundation is known for. And since they're forced to report on these things, they usually just end up giving all of your projects more publicity in the process. 
So while guys like Zuckerberg and Musk just donate their money and sit around waiting for people to notice, you find a way to make sure everyone knows just how good and generous you are. But why stop at controlling the media? COVID-19 vaccine will likely be ready by early next year. In fact, we'll probably have more than one vaccine ready. I'm confident that the world will build a plan to eliminate COVID-19, saving millions of lives and getting on a path to global recovery. When COVID hit, it felt like you couldn't get through more than an hour on any news channel without hearing the name Bill Gates pop up at least once. And that wasn't just some weird coincidence. See, thanks to the Gates Foundation's reputation for going all out to promote public health, and all your slaves, I mean donation recipients at all the major news outlets, you as Bill Gates had the perfect opportunity to play the expert on what the pandemic response should look like. You were asked for your opinion on some of the most respected scientific journals as if you were an actual doctor or scientist. And one of the biggest things you pushed was making vaccines accessible to everyone. These vaccines will allow us to save millions of lives. They'll also have another enormous benefit. They'll allow us to develop a plan for the world to globally eliminate COVID-19. The only problem was, while you were on TV telling governments and businesses that sharing the vaccine was the only way to keep us all safe, and while the Gates Foundation was telling everyone how it was delivering vaccines to poor underdeveloped countries that couldn't afford them, the Gates Foundation was actively blocking a move to waive the patents on COVID vaccines that would have forced big pharma companies to share their recipes with everyone. And why were you doing that? Could it be because the Gates Foundation had investments in companies that slipped to make billions from developing these vaccines? No, that would be totally immoral and unethical. And anyone who insinuates such a thing is a conspiracy theorists. Oh wait, it turns out the Gates Foundation did have investments in companies that were developing the COVID vaccine. And not only did you straight up lie about having a financial interest in these companies, you even got PolitiFact and USA Today to use their fact-checking platforms to protect you. And coincidentally, the Gates Foundation also donates money to PolitiFact and USA Today every single year. But I'm sure that has nothing to do with them lying on your behalf. Or trying to cover up the fact that tax forms published on the Gates Foundation website itself clearly show that you had money invested in these pharma companies. And that's not the only little conflict of interest you covered up over the years. How about the time the Gates Foundation gave a humanitarian award to Modi, the Prime Minister of India, who also happens to have a horrible track record of human rights abuses? Did it have something to do with the fact that the Gates Foundation has a lot of stake in India, including huge offices and hundreds of millions of dollars in public health programs? Who knows? What about all the times the Gates Foundation had used this money to force third world countries into policy changes that benefit their public image or the companies they're invested in? Just another coincidence, I'm sure. So aspiring billionaire, as you can see, having a charitable foundation is not only good for your public image, but you can also use it for stuff like this. Now besides good PR and all the antics Bill Gates is up to, there are other practical benefits to having a charitable foundation. With a charitable foundation, you're only legally required to donate 5% of your money every year. That means you can put some of your wealth into your own private foundation, it won't be taxed, then you can invest your foundation's money into things like the stock market, and as long as you're able to earn over 5% a year, you're going to be breaking even or even growing your wealth, I mean your foundation's wealth. Because in reality, whatever money you put into your foundation really isn't your money anymore. It's the foundation's money on paper, you no longer own it. That's why any money you put in your private foundation can't be used for sketchy stuff, like buying a yacht or supercars, unless you can reasonably argue that you're buying a Lambo under your foundation for charitable purposes. Have fun arguing that to the IRS. So if you can't legally use the money in your foundation to financially benefit yourself, what can you do about it? Well, one benefit that the Ultra Wealthy use foundations for is to employ their family members. Ah yes, if Billy over here just can't get his life together after Harvard, he'll always have the family foundation to fall back on that will pay him a nice salary. He'll just have to do some BS work for the foundation to make it look legit, and he'll never have to work a real job a day in his life. This makes foundations a great way to ensure your family will always be taken care of. The interesting thing about billionaires using charitable foundations is that you only really see this in America. You see it a little bit in Europe, but over there, billionaires and old money families are a lot more low-key. 
They stay out of the limelight because they learn better. And you definitely don't see billionaires donating money in Russia or China. None of the oligarchs in Russia care about donating. None of the billionaires in China have foundations that feed the hungry or house the homeless. They don't feel the need to hide their wealth or pretend to be something they aren't. But it comes with consequences. Sure, it means that they can buy mega yachts and show off their supercars while everyone else struggles. But you want to know what also happens to these Russian and Chinese billionaires in the long run? One by one, they're either killed, disappeared, or thrown into jail. And if it wasn't for their foundations and donations, American billionaires would probably face the same fate. So what is the lesson from all of this? Is that foundations should only be used for actual charity. <laughs> it's that if you want to be a billionaire today, well you better have a charitable plan in place to win the hearts and minds of the masses. So stay dangerous, subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next one.